in reflecting on the whole COVID experience as a person, as a Christian, as a family person and as a school principal, there were many positive and challenging times. When asked to reflect on the whole experience, it was very helpful that I was given uh, a copy of Pope Francis's Ubi et Orbi address during the extraordinary moment of prayer on the 27th of March from Sister Adele Murphy. This helped me to focus and seek out the moments where I was calling on the spiritual and recognising the God of love and the God of life in my neighbourhood, in my school, in my community, seeing that God of creation. I was also aware of the moments where I also could only see one set of footprints to realise later that it was my trusted friend Jesus who carried me when the walk was difficult. The sound of creation each morning with the brightness of sunshine and the freshness of air was a real moment of appreciation each day of the beauty of the world. Daily walks on Griffith Avenue with my wife, daughter and our rough collie, or ventures on Dolly Mount Sand Dunes gave me the sustenance to deal with the myriad of issues that arose during the regularly referred to unprecedented times. It was an opportunity for Mother Earth to breathe, to renew and to whisper to us a reminder that we need faith and need to be mindful of our impact on the Earth. Despite the regular sustenance of nature and keeping up fitness training, there were challenging times, referred to in Francis's message, where like the apostles we were caught off guard by the storm. The responsibilities on principals towards pupils learning online in challenging situations, teachers teaching online at such short notice, keeping up communication with families and staff, organising food parcel collections, book collections etc. It was important for me to help calm the storm within our learning community and somehow my inner storm. To get staff to appreciate the great work they were doing and not to put pressure on themselves by comparing teachers or schools, I was aware of families struggling with, some, with home teaching and with learning. Everyone had a struggle. The loss of jobs and anguish that it brought many in our society was immense and those dealing with COVID daily, including those in our learning community, had a lot to deal with. As Pope Francis said, the Lord asks us, and in the midst of our tempest, invites us to reawaken and put into practice that solidarity and hope capable of giving strength, support and meaning to these hours when everything else seems to be floundering. We all needed to remain calm, manage, manage the challenges of the cross and recognise the moments of resurrection in our lives. Getting our school ready for opening was an immense challenge, like needing faith and navigators needing the stars, as Pope Francis said. I needed to be able to support and guide my staff, but was very aware that the only way to guide was also to be guided by those, by my deputy, by my management team, by all the teachers. I, along with others, taking care not to sow panic, but a shared responsibility. Again, word of Pope Francis. Through all of this journey, there were many moments turning to prayer. Decades of the Rosary, John Michael Talbot's spiritual music, creation, entering my own heart room, calling on several saints at different times. Lakela sent a framed picture of a lighthouse, which brought out in me the importance of guiding and being guided, so as to guide others sometimes in directions that they may not have wanted to go. This journey, all along, was made easier by the support of family, looking after relatives, the support of staff and support of prayer. A prayer that I took from the back of uh, a book for the 150th anniversary of the Dominicans in, in Wicklow is something that has stuck with me since I was down at that Mass last year and in many ways the person who put that prayer into the book probably didn't realise the impact that it could have on people. So I'm just going to finish my reflection reading that prayer. It was written by uh, Bishop Ken Utener of Saginaw and the words are attributed to St. Oscar Romero. But for anybody uh, in any position, and particularly I suppose in a leadership position, the words are very powerful. The Kingdom. It helps now and then to step back and take the long view. The Kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. 
No program accomplishes the church's mission. That is what we are about. We plant the seeds that will one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything and there is a sense of liberation in realising that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and to do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the workers. We are the workers, not the master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are the prophets of a future, not of our own. Amen.